Good morning, everybody. I came out here and they were just open all the way up, just grabbing all the sun. I, this is the first time I left them out all night. Oh, y'all, go ahead and subscribe and like all that good stuff. But yeah, I left them out all night for the first time because we've been getting great weather. Yesterday was in the 70s, high 70s. Today is going to be in the low 70s and it feels good. I'm wasting my days. 12 o'clock. I should have been up, but I stayed up late. Y'all, my voice be sounding so raspy when I first wake up. And my pony is <laughs> it's her face is washed teeth are brushed and now I'm about to do something I've been putting off let me show you so y'all um, this is the next day but I decided to insert this because I in this video I didn't really explain what I was doing when it comes to pruning the tree and using the five gallon bucket as opposed to the 17 gallon bucket that I did purchase for the tree. Um, once doing more research on the peach tree or any fruit tree, you wanna not start with such a big bin. Like nothing is wrong with this bin. I will eventually put her in that, in that bin, but she has to grow into that bin. So you want a container that's bigger than, a little bit bigger than the width of her, but not too big. So that way when you're putting her in, and I'm saying her, but when you're putting your peach tree or any fruit tree into a container, you want that tree to receive the nutrients that it would get if it were in the actual ground. And if you have, <coughs> excuse me, if your container is too big for the root of that tree, then it's gonna be hard for your roots to receive all the nutrients it needs and all the water that your roots will need. And therefore it'll start stretching more. It doesn't mean a bigger pot is gonna give you a bigger tree. Your tree will eventually grow into that container over there. So this is why I have her in the five gallon right here so that the tree doesn't have to work as hard to get the nutrients and doesn't have, have to work as hard to get the water that it needs. Now, when it comes to pruning, the reason I pruned her, and I don't know if you can make it out at the angle that I'm in, but she goes up to right there. So what I was doing was I was trimming off this part these parts up in here so it says from 18 to 24 inches from the base of the tree so that's why i clipped off right here and i think i clipped one right here if i'm not mistaken and i'm keeping this one here because you want it to shoot out like this but like this one right here i missed i will be clipping that off and you wanna do it at a 45 degree angle and just a clear cut. And then also this one over here, I'm gonna leave for now, cause you don't wanna, because it's a young tree, you don't wanna clip so much in case something happened to one of the um, branches. Like when I came out this morning, this one was hanging down like this. A piece of it was hanging down. So I don't know if a squirrel had been on the tree and it broke. So you want to not clip so many off. Just give it time to see. You just don't want it to get out of control before you do start pruning it. And you also, with a peach tree, is different from an apple tree or a pear tree. A peach tree needs to be opened up. So the canopy needs to be open. So like this piece here, I can cut that piece right there off and that allow the sun to come in because what you want is the sun to be able to come into the tree. 
and you don't want your tree so high where once it does start producing which will be a while because you don't really want the first fruit off of the tree so um unlike the pear and the apple you can't shake this tree and get the peaches to fall off you would have to actually get up there and get it so you have to be careful of how high you want your tree to be and those were the reasons that i pruned um it's a few more that I could take off, but I'm not because I want to see what the limbs do. So I'm going to be patient on that before I decide. But I did want to get this area from here to the base, 18 to 24 inches with no limbs. Because certain limbs, even if, you, if it bared fruit, it's not going to be able to hold the fruit because it's so small like this one. But when you look at this one, I don't know if you can tell. You probably can't tell from this one. This wouldn't be one that's going to bear fruit anyway. Because if you look at the canker, God, where's the canker? If you look at the canker right here, you can tell that this is not going to be one that's going to bear fruit. But then when you look at the canker on this one, well, there it is. If I can get it to focus right right there you want it to look like this in a more rosy color or burgundy color those are the ones that are going to give you your fruit now the two cankers is what's in between that's going to give you the fruit and you can't really see it because this is such a young tree this one's a little more clear yeah, wait. Right there. That piece that's right there in the middle, that green piece, if my phone will do right, right there. The green piece in the middle is where your peach is actually going to form from. So, you probably can see it on this one a lot better. right there is the green piece that's in between what looks like the balls <laughs> was between that that's the piece that's going to give you the peach and if you have lighter color branches like this one is a more burgundy color and this one's not it's a little burgundy but i can't really tell if it's going to change all the way so it's a good branch it's going to remain but like this one he'll i'll probably end up taking that off because you just want all the energy to go where it needs to go and then you can train your tree i was researching last night and it said you can train your tree and all you need is um maybe a string or if these were thicker you could use like a board but being it's so young you would use a string and you would just like how this one is shooting up it's not quite over as much you can just take something and anchor it to the ground and put a string and tie it on there and that'll help that shoot out like that basically like this one right here but that's why i i said that one and I want to keep this one even though it's really close to that one. You don't want them so close together, but I can always try to train it to stay where it needs to be. And so when it comes to fertilizing it, I didn't, if you, you will, you'll see in the video, I did not use the black cow. The reason I didn't use the black cow is because when you're using containers, they say that black cow is a good fertilizer for it, but to put it directly into the soil at where the roots are may not be good because if you, depends on where you live, honestly. If you live in a climate, it's going to be a hundred plus, like in Arizona somewhere, or 95 plus degrees 
and you have black cow or any kind of fertilizer right there at the roots of your um, peach tree, then you might have issues because the black cow or the other fertilizer hasn't broken down. And so being it hasn't broken down, once it starts breaking down, it heats up. And with the heat and the sun, it's gonna um, maybe bake your roots. So that's why I didn't use that, but you can use it on top. And so that's what I'm about to do now. I'm gonna add, already added the um, earthworms to the top, but I did not add the black cow. So that's what I'm adding to the top. That way it'll give it time to break down before it gets to the roots. By the time it gets to the roots, with me watering it, it will have already broken down. So I don't have to worry about it burning my roots. And I also will be adding wood chips on top of this. I'm about to head out to Lowe's now. And you'll, well, this video will be out Saturday. So today is Thursday. So I'll be adding the uh, wood chips to that, to the top. So she'll probably stay, she'll tell me when she's ready to move up into another size. And, not, and she may not move into the 17 gallon. She's in a five gallon now. So I'm going to go out and try to find a 10 gallon um while I'm in Lowe's, I'll look to see if they have any and may, if they do, I'll grab it because she may not stay in this, but more than six months. In six months, we'll see about moving her into a 10 gallon. And then from the 10, I'll move her to um, this 17 gallon. And that's how I will be doing it over here. Everybody does things differently. So I'm not telling you to do it my way over anybody else's way just do your own research and so that's what i did and this is what we came up with so i hope you enjoy the rest of the video i have my potting mix right here and i have my earthworm castings finally i have my bone meal i have my miracle Grow food and i have and I have this beautiful peach tree. Yeah, she got a little curve in her right here, but that's okay. So I'm about to prune her and I thought I'd bring y'all along while I do it. Um, I've been watching a ton of, not a ton, just one particular really um, way of doing it that I decided I was gonna do it the way that this person does theirs. Yeah, this is awesome. Excuse the yard, y'all. It's been raining, raining, raining. And my grass is gone. My husband hasn't had time to come out here and do me two more raised beds because of all the rain, but yeah. The raised beds, the two that I'm getting, will go right there where the pallets are. And I might make um, a smaller raised bed using those pallets just so I'm not wasting wood. So I'll be right back. Okay, y'all. So this is my bucket. I don't know if y'all can get it because of the light, but this is my bucket. I put holes in it yesterday. As you can see, I have five holes in it. And then along the sides, this is a five gallon bucket. I put holes around the side from every hole at the bottom at a 45 degree angle here, 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 and here. So what I'm about to do now is I have a little bit of soil in here not much very little but I went out and I bought me some earthworm castings 
I'm just happy I'm able to wear my hat, y'all, because one, I can't be with this as you can't be in the sun like that, um, exposed. But um I have my bone meal that's right here. And we're gonna get started. This this potting mix right here, I paid five dollars for it. It was half off because of this little tiny hole. I don't know if you can see that. Just because of that little tiny hole, y'all. So. This potty mix has perlite in it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, peat moss. Maybe some vermiculite. I'm not sure. I have to check. But it's very light and very fluffy. I'm just gonna fill this whole bucket up. Leave enough space to add my earthworm castings to it. Okay. That ain't gonna do me. So I'm wasting. We don't wanna waste any soil if we don't have to. Okay. So a pretty good bit just left in there. Fall out. Okay, so now we have our soil. Got a trowel. Just gonna break it up, and it's not a lot to break up. I'm gonna show you how fine and soft it is. Isn't that crazy? So y'all, can y'all take the time? I have another channel called Tommy Bites Life. If y'all could help, it is a fitness channel, a get healthy channel. And I may do some cleaning videos over there as well. But gardening and working out in your yard, that's an exercise too. All of that. Look at that soil. God, that thing's pretty. And I love the way it smells. So to that, I'm gonna add some of these earthworm castings right here. This is the bag I'm using. I got it from Home Depot for $7.97. And I don't have a problem with putting my hands in here because when I get done today, guess what? Me and my son are going fishing. Well, he's going fishing, I'm going walking, and then I'll throw out later. But this is the earthworm casting right here. And all it is, is worm poop. They wanna give it a pretty name. So, I'm not gonna use a lot of it. We're on a budget over here. This is budget gardening. already moist and a little damp so I'm not gonna wet it now this is my let's see if I can get her in here the sun is so bright today y'all God bless us I'm just gonna cut this off and try not to cut my words because I would maybe like to read my lately a little bit so I'm gonna cut it off so y'all we gonna prune her we got to prune her Okay, y'all, so with her curving like this, um, from everything that I've learned, you want to prune off anything that's growing within, like into, so like these right here would have to go, this one right here would have to go, so that's what I'll be taking off of her. Everything else that's going out, like in a Y shape, you want to keep. want a clean cut and it's gonna look like I'm cutting everything off but I'm not this one has to go too close to the other one 
and if you don't want your tree super duper tall starting off you can prune that down some I don't know if I want her that tall or not Okay, y'all, so I moved her to in between the raised beds for now until I figure out where I'm going to put her in the yard. So let's get busy with um, taking her out. Now, I've only seen this done. I've not done this myself, y'all. So this is my first. Something's blowing in here. This is my first peach tree, well, fruit tree, period. And it's not going to be my last because I am getting more trees. She's, she's tall. I did not trim her all the way down. So she's like up there. I only trimmed, I only pruned out what was growing on the inside. Um, Cause I, you want everything to go out like this. So I'll decide later if I'm gonna keep that long piece or not. So that I'm going to break up. But first, I'm going to take my bucket that I put the holes in. See that? Um, I'm going to put some soil in that. Remember, I mixed this with the earthworms and the potting soil that has perlite in it. Also going to add bone meal to this. how she leans though she got that lean to her so I'm gonna try to when I put the soil in around her have her standing a little bit like this so. I'm going to give her extra worm castings and some bone meal. Oh, 
stuff comes with this warm weather. It's doggone oh. bugs. Get because I know my mosquitoes are bad. I didn't want to have her up real high because if I have when I have to add to it I don't want my nutrients running over the bucket when I water believe I have my first peach tree. I hope, I hope um, I'm managing this the right way. I'm going to put some worm castings on the top just so when I water it she'll get it at the bottom and she'll get it at the top going down into the soil. This is so, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Y'all just don't know. God, me. She's so pretty. Girl, you're so pretty, girl. You have to put your face in this. It's almost like when I'm canning and I have to eat the jar. She's so pretty. So pretty. So I'm going to water her. So because um, of all the rain, I had buckets all around my backyard catching this good rainwater. And that's what I'm giving her. And this will also let me know if I need to add more. Ooh, something crawling on me, y'all. The spider. A spreader. So we're gonna let that settle. She got her a good bit of water just now. Oh, so I will make sure like every two days to come out here and give her some water. And that's it, y'all. That's it. I hate how she leans like this. It almost makes me feel like she's a grafted tree. But it didn't say that. Thank y'all for joining me. I appreciate it. And until next time, y'all stay safe. Love you, but God loves you more. Smooches. Here